Okay, I will tell you, some people believe that these class variables, you should put those before your instance variables. That's not really that big a thing because they're all variables. But if you agree with that, then you can move them around. It, it doesn't matter. But I want, if you look up on the screen here, we're not going to do this now, but we're going to do this in about five minutes. That is, we're going to come up here and we're going to go code, generate, getter, and we're going to choose what? Our first name, our last name, our hours, our rate, and our gross. All five of those. And that's going to write our five getters. Then when we get done, we're going to do another code, generate, and we're going to choose setters. Everybody with me? But first, we're going to put in our constructors. All right? So we're going to have two constructors. We'll have one where we pass in everything, and we'll have one when we pass in nothing. Did you hear that? All right. We could have more than that if we wanted to, but I figured this was enough. So I'm going to put a comment here. And I'm going to say, whoops. This will be my no arg constructor. All right. Remember how we do that? It's public and then the name of the class. The name of the class is payroll. So that right there, that is our no R constructor. That is right there. All right. So that's the one that's going to be called if we create a payroll object and we pass in nothing. Everybody hear that? So what do we want to do? Okay. I'm going to show you the worst thing we could possibly do. Okay. And in, in fact, would be to just say this. This dot first name, don't type in this please, equals double quote, double quote, this dot last name, equal double quote, double quote, this dot hours, equals 0, 0.0, this dot rate, equals 0, 0.0. We're not going to worry about the gross pay. That's the worst way we could do this. Because we're not giving the person a name. That could be very confusing. All right? So what I did was this. Now, don't type in this either. All right? Okay, I'm going to say here, okay, that just means first name unknown. At least there's something there. Now I could go back and check and see if every, you know, every single time that I'm doing this, all right, I could check and, you know, if it had FNU, that's probably not anyone's name. LNU is probably not anyone's name, all right? For right now, I'm just going to leave it like that, Okay. Now, look, if you would, please look up on the screen. Do you remember, I'm asking you this, do you remember that I mentioned that Java's got three kinds of comments, that one of the kinds they have is right here. It's called a Java doc comment, all right? I'm going to try something, and I don't know if it's going to work because I just found it out during the break. <laughs> and that is, and you, don't, you just watch. You don't have to do it. But I'm going to go back to my code. I'm going to go back to my generate, and now... Here, hold on. Choose tools generate Dava Jock. I'm sorry. All right, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to choose tools generate Dava do Java Doc. So we could make our make Java Doc comments in here by filling in some of this stuff. Okay, so it is the process is somewhat automated. That's what I'm telling you. All right. Now, I'm not going to do any of that, but I just wanted to show it to you. So that's our first constructor. Pardon? Yes, you can put all that in there. Yes, thank you. All right. We're going to make our... Yours won't be underlined because I just copied everything. So when you get done with this, just make a copy of it. So when you're done with, with all of this,
copy it and throw it right down below where it is. You'll get an error, but we're going to fix it. All right? I just don't want us to have to, to spend boatloads of time typing. That's all. <clears throat> what this is going to mean, if you'd all look up on the screen here, please, what's going to happen very soon, okay? In just a couple minutes, you don't have to do this yet, I'll give you time, but we're going to right mouse click on here, choose new Java class, and type in payroll driver. So we're going to create a payroll driver class, all right? And then in that payroll driver class, eventually what we're going to do is we're going to say payroll Jeff equals new payroll like that. Okay? And what's going to happen, I'm not sure why I'm getting that, but I'm not worried about it right now. The point is, when we do this, it's going to say, okay, do we have a payroll thing that we created with no, with no arguments? So it's going to set my first name to FNU, my last name to LNU, my hours to zero, and my rate to zero. That makes sense? Oh, it's because I didn't put it into a main. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, still give me an error. But we'll, again, we're going to get it to work. I'm not worried about it. We will get it to work. All right? Yeah, that could be too. All right? It should have put that up there. I'm surprised that it didn't, but we'll see. All right, I'll just copy that line. Yep, that was it. But now it doesn't like that line. So again, I'm not going to worry about it. We'll get this fixed. All right? I'm just trying to show you that when we get in here and we do this, okay, what's going to happen? I'm just going to remove everything from it from right now. Then I'm not going to get an error. All right? All right. So we came in. We created our comment. We created our package. We, cre we imported our decimal format file. We did our, meth our class header. We did our constants. We did our instance variables. We did our class variables, et cetera, et cetera. All right? So we did all this stuff. All right? Now, it's saying here, payroll is already defined. Okay, I'm not sure why I got that. Oh, it's because I copied it down here. All right. So, now this one, I'm going to copy in everything. All right. When I say everything, I mean these four things. And don't worry about gross pay. Gross pay is what gets calculated. All right. So, I'm going to put in here, string, FN for first name string ln for last name, all right, double h for hours, and double r for rate, all right? Notice that error that was here went away, okay? And I'm going to reset these. Now, you can type this in, but I, I'm going to show you the problem with what I'm about to do, all right? So you can put this in just like this. And I'll give you a second to do that, but then I want to talk about it because we're going to make this better. And then in a little bit, we're going to make it even better. All right? Pardon? Oh, yeah, it, this can be, we can call it for our constructor. It doesn't really matter. The problem with this right here is what if we create a brand new payroll object and for the first name we just put in the empty string, double quote, double quote. Right now, that's going to give their name as double quote, double quote. That's not a good thing. All right. So we can write this to make it a little bit better. Okay. And what I want to say is this, if what we put in here is not empty, then set the first name to it. But if it is empty, set it to that FNU that we did before. And FNU is just something I made up. It has no meaning whatsoever. So I'm going to change this one 
and I'm going to change this one, and I'm going to change this one, and I'm going to change this one right now. All right? So, just going to copy this again please look on the screen if you are not a good typist grab this copy it and then just change these fn's to ln's all right this is a better way of handling it than the way we just did we could have done this with an if statement right we could have done we could have said if fn dot equals all right, double quote, double quote, and then we could have put in curly braces this dot first name equals FN, else this dot first name equals, this is just a shortcut. Okay. How about this? Well, can't we, can't we actually come in here right now and make sure that it falls within range? Can't we come in and make sure that it's between our min hours and our max hours? That's what I did. And it's a little bit ugly because I start with three parentheses here. All right. And it doesn't matter. I'm doing the greater than max hours first, and then I'll do the, the min hours, but it doesn't matter. So if it's greater than max hours, greater than or not equal to, if it's greater than, that should be min hours. I'm sorry. If it's greater than or equal to min hours, meaning it's greater than or equal to zero, and it's less than or equal to max hours, can somebody tell me in English, what does this mean? What does that mean? Don't worry about the rest of it. What does that mean? Three words. No. It's in range. We did it the other way. This is saying if it's greater than or equal to zero and it's less than or equal to 84. So if it's in range. Well, if it's in range, then it's valid, correct? So if it's in range, all right, what we want to do is question mark. We want to set it. Okay. Fn. I'm sorry. H. Colon. So if it's not within range, 0.0. .0. That's it. And we're going to do the same exact thing for the next one. Again, I'm going to copy. Oops, Z. Copy. And instead of H, it'll be R. And instead of min hours, it'll be min rate. And instead, again, this will be an R. And again, this will be rate. And that will be R with a semicolon. Okay. Does what's going on there make sense to everyone? That's what I'm concerned with. All right. We could go back, if you all look up on the screen here, we could go back. I'm just going to show you with this one. We could have taken this code that you see right here. Okay, I'm going to move this way the heck up. All right, this line that's right here. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to rewrite this. And I'm just going to do it in Notepad. Don't put this on your program. But we could have written, instead of what we have here, we, instead of this line, we could have said, if H is less than, I'm sorry, is um, greater than or equal to min hours and h is less than or equal to max hours we put in a bunch of parens and stuff in here so i'd put in a paren here i would put in a paren here you don't have to do that but i i'm go paren crazy so then we could say if that's the case All 
right, so if that's the case, then we would say set this dot hours equal to H. Oops. Else this dot hours equals 0, 0.0. Now, if you'd all please for a second look at the screen. I don't know about you, but if you tell me, I can either type in this line that you see right here that's in blue, or I can type in this. I'll take the first one. They are both doing the same thing. But you are at the point now in your programmatic career that if there is a shortcut and you have been taught the shortcut, you should use the shortcut. Does that make sense? So I could go back and rewrite all of these, all four of these, so they look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would be 32 lines of code I would have as opposed to four. And there's nothing at all wrong with doing it that way. It just, this is much, much, much cleaner. All right. All right. So now we've written our no arc constructor, and we wrote our for arc constructor. Those are the only ones I'm creating. We could make more if we wanted to. I'm not going to, but we could. Now, if you look up on the screen, now we're ready to do our getters and setters. So now I'm going to do code, generate. I'm going to go, I do my getters first. And the ones we want to choose here, make sure you choose the right ones. First name, oops, first name, Last name, hours, and rate. Just those four. So code, generate, choose getters, and in the box that you see here that comes up, choose first name, choose last name, choose hours, choose rate. If you're a very deliberate person, you can literally do them one at a time. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you could if you wanted to. All right, so I'm going to click OK, and boom, there's my four, there are my four uh, setters. I'm just going to quickly put a little thing between each one. You don't have to do this. All right, I'm just doing it again because it makes it easier for me to read this. Now I'm going to go back in. All right, so I now have my four setters. Or I'm sorry, my four getters. There's my get first name. There's my get last name, each returning a string. There's my get hours. There's my get rate, each returning a double. All right? And I'm going to go down right below that. And again, I'm going to do a code, generate, setter. And again, I'm going to choose first name, last name, hours, and rate. And say OK. Now I have my four setters have now been put in here. I'm going to have to make changes to those setters. But again, the system has done a pretty good job of giving me a nice start, okay? Because right now we're not doing any validation whatsoever. We're not doing any validation. We're going to change that in just a minute, okay? Now, if you look up on the screen, this is up to us. This is what the system created for us, right? Everybody, just stop typing for a second and look at this. If you don't want to put this dot in front of everything, just change this to something else. I'm going to do that. I'm going to make this FN, I'm going to make this LN, I'm going to make my hours H, and I'm going to make my rate R. Because I have less to type that. That's all. That's the only reason for doing it. It would work fine, but now I don't have to worry about using the this. So I'm going to put FN here, I'm going to put LN here, which means I have to change this to FN, I have to change this to LN, and now I, I can keep the this dot if I want to, but I don't really need it anymore. All right, I'll leave that up there for a second, so if you want to change yours, you can. If you don't want to change yours, don't change it. But then you're going to make, you have to make sure you're always using the this dot at certain times. I'm going to do those in just a second. 
hours I just called H and rate I just called R. All right? You don't, but I'm just telling you, you don't have to do that. All right, so there's the first name and the last name, and I'm gonna, then I'm going to go to hours here, make that H, and I'm going to go to rate here and make that R. Some programmers like to use the this dot, and they like to use the same name. Some don't. You know, you all have your own little quirks in here as far as the way you do things. And it's not that one way is more correct or less correct than doing it another way. All right? Now, I've got some good news for you. I think. Maybe you don't agree. But the good news is we already have all these, setter, these uh, setters. We got them all written already. Didn't we already write those up here? So I'm going to grab this code here, and I'm going to copy it, okay? And I'm going to go down to my set first name, and I'm going to put that in there. And again, I can put the this dot. It doesn't matter. And then I'm going to grab my last name one, and I'm just going to do this all four times. Then I'm going to go down and do the thing for hours. And finally, I'm going to do the one for rate. Now, whenever I give a lecture like this, I always come to these moments where I purposely stop because it's my hope, and it didn't happen, but it's my hope that somebody raises their hand and looks at me and says, Hey, Jeff, remember this one that we wrote up here? Couldn't we have just said set first name and passed in FN? And the answer is yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... Whoop, I'm going to take these four lines that we wrote right here in our in our first no our for our constructor. I'm going to comment every one of them out. Comment out, comment out, comment out. All right, and I'm going to change them to this, to set first name, and I'm going to pass F N in there. Whoops, F N. Then I'm going to call set last name. I'm going to pass in L N. And I'm going to call set hours, and I'm going to pass in H. And finally, I'm going to call set rate, and I'm going to pass in R. All right. By doing this, I have eliminated duplicative code. Does that make sense to everyone? They're actually, believe it or not, I was at a conference once, and I listened to two people at the conference debate over whether you should do it this way or whether you should do it that way. And they both had merit. All right? It wasn't that one was right and one was wrong. You can do it either way. I think the way that we just did it, by commenting that out and putting the other one in, I think that's a better way of doing it. All right? I'm not saying, do you agree, do you not agree? Because, it, you know, really it's... Everybody has their own feelings when they do anything. All right? Now, we have two, 
three more things to do in this class. First thing we have to do is we haven't figured out our gross yet. Everybody agree with that? Okay. So we now have in here, if you look from the top, we now have our constructor. All right, our no arc, we can't really call set because there's nothing to pass. So here we kind of have to do it like this. Okay, because we don't have parameters to pass. All right. But here we went and rewrote that. We've got our get first name, our set for our get last name, our get hours, our get rate, our set first name, our set last name, our set hours, and our set rate. All right. The next thing we want to do is we want to write our get gross. Now, look on, on the screen, please. I'm going to put my get gross right after my last get, because I like to keep my gets together. Okay? You may or may not agree with that. So I'm going to come in here, and now in here I'm going to have public double get gross. All right? And the good news is you know how to write this already. We've written this umpteen times almost. All right? So if, now, please look up on the screen. We could say this, right? True or false, this is totally legit. We can do that, right? It's not giving me any errors, but I shouldn't write it like that. I should write it like that. That's considered the object-oriented way, I'm sorry, with two parens afterwards, that is considered the object-oriented way of doing it. You might as well learn to do it the way that is, you know, the most done way, the accepted way of doing it. So if that's the case, then gross equals just plain get hours times get rate. Does that look familiar? If you look up on what I wrote on the screen before, We're not returning it yet, okay? And there's a reason we're not returning right now, but we could, okay? So, so in that case, what does this mean? Well, that means they worked 40 or less hours. Everybody agree with that? Because max non-OT is 40. And actually, it's, I'm sorry, please change yours. It's less than or equal to, because otherwise we're giving them overtime for 40 hours. Okay? So if they work less than or equal to 40 hours, it's just straight time. Hours times rate. Okay? If we hit this else here, then we know, we know what? We know that they worked greater than 40 hours, in other words, OT coming. You know, you don't have to write that. Whatever you'd like to write, all right? They've earned OT, whatever you want to say, all right? And again, this becomes pretty ugly now, just so you know. Mercifully, that that is it. Now, you might have your own way of doing overtime, and you might be able to come up with a, something that's better than the way I just did it. That's okay if you want to change it. But again, as I've said to you many times before, let's do this very quickly here. 
we're going to have two employees right here. All right. We're going to have Jeff and we're going to have Sandy. All right. And Jeff, for my hours work, Jeff worked 40 hours and Jeff's hourly rate is $25 an hour. Sandy's hours work is 50 and her hourly rate is 20. Okay? Everybody with me? So, play computer. Get hours. Well, that's going to return 40. Is that less than or equal to 40? Yes, 40 is less than or equal to 40. So, my gross is going to be get hours, which is 40, times get rate, which is 25, which should give me 1,000. Does all that make sense? Just straight time. All right. Sandy, all right, she's got to get her paid her first 40 hours, so she's got to have max non OT, which is 40 times her regular. So this is her straight time. That right there, that is this right here. That's this. And then we want to add to this the number of hours she worked, which was 50 minus 40 times her rate, 20 times 1.5. Well, 10 times 20 times 1.5, 200 times 1.5, or 300. So her amount is going to be 800, which is her straight time, plus 300. So she'll make $1,100. All right? That should make sense to you. It really and truly should. The 10 hours she got paid an overtime rate for. That's all we're saying. And again, if you don't like it, because there are different ways that you can do this. You could break the calculation up into a series of steps. There's a lot of different ways that it could be done. So if it's easier for you to understand by writing your own formula, as long as the formula is correct, all right, then go ahead and do that. All right, we're done with the gross now, but we're not done here. Remember this? Look up on the screen here. Remember this? This? Wouldn't you say it's time that we add, our total, add to our total gross? All right. Before we do that, what's this thing? Remember I said that's our count of our number of employees, correct? Well, you know what we didn't do in here? Is every time we create a new employee, we should be saying plus plus count. We should do it here, and we should do it here. So please go back to both, to each one of your constructors, and add as a first executable line of code in there, plus plus count. Because we want to add, we're adding to our employee count. If we don't do that at the end, when we print out the number of employees, it's going to say zero, because we haven't added to the count. All right, so put plus plus count before you, you know, it's the first executable line in your no arg constructor, and put plus plus count is the first executable line in your other constructor. All right, sorry, I forgot that. I didn't mean to, but I did. All right, now we're back in here. Okay, how about tote gross plus equals gross? that makes sense? All right. And return gross. That's everything. All right, we've got to overwrite our two string method and then we have to write a print totals method. We literally have a total of about seven or eight more lines to, to type in and this particular class is done that we're writing right here. Now, one thing about this. No one's asked, but I do want to mention something to you, and that is this. Sometimes people get confused because they're like, okay, I get what you're saying here, return gross. I understand it, okay? But we define gross way up on the top here. It was automatically a global variable. Why are we returning a global variable? Technically, do we have to do that? We don't have to, except that we said that when you call get gross, it's going to return a double. That's why. We could have probably made that a void and then not put the return statement in there. Right? There's always, there's so many different ways that you can write 
and rewrite the same program. All right? That's why I'm very interested in, you know, when, when we get into the Android portion of the class, we're going to write two or three of these as a class. And then I'm going to say it, one of your tests will probably be, okay, take one of the ones we did and totally rewrite it and do it your way. Put your, you know, make it graphical or do whatever it is you want to do to it. That's when you start learning, all right, because you're stretching what, what you've been taught, all right, and you're incorporating your own stuff in there. All right, so we've got that done now. Now I want to go down to the very bottom and I want to write two more routines. So I'm going down to the very bottom right before I've got this. All right, so I'm down at the very bottom here. And I want to write two different routines. The first one I want to do is I want to overwrite that two string method. So I want to say public string to string. Okay, no, no semicolon. All right. Again, I'm getting the little red squiggly there because it's expecting a string to be returned, and I'm not returning a string. All right. I will be in just a minute. All right. Now, this is how I wrote it. If you don't like it, you can always rewrite it your own way. But I said here, string output str equals, and I just set it to the empty string. I'm just used to doing that. All right, then I'm going to have a whole bunch of, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six lines that says output str plus equals something. So I'm going to do that six times. So I'm going to start, I didn't want to do that, but that's fine. I'm going to have that in there six times. Again, if you are not a good typist, get used to using copy and paste and do a better job than I just did. All right, when we're all done, when we're totally finished here, we're going to return output string. Now we're not done. We have to put the stuff in here we want to write. So let's do that. <clears throat> this is the way I did it. Like I said, I put in a whole bunch of dashes here. You'll see why in a minute. All right, I put that in there first. That's just used as a delimiter. That's all. Now we want to, uh, I'm sorry, look on, look on the screen here. These are correct, but we want to format them. Okay, so I need to put in our form, what do we call our formatting things? F1 and F2 were they? F1 and F2. F1 has got the dollar sign and F2 does not. So, sorry, you've got to make a little, re re little thing here, so come on. F2 dot format. F1 dot get rate, and that's got to be formatted. And F1 dot format get gross.
to my knowledge, that should be everything. And we have to do a print totals, which has got a grand total of one, two, three, four, five, six lines in it. Maybe seven if I miscounted. So we've got about seven more lines, and we're done with this class. All right, when we're done with the class, we have to write the driver. Now, if this works, when we get it all done, if it works, and we call the routine basically to, we call system.out.println, this is what should print. First name followed by their first name, last name followed by their last name, hours work followed by their hours work, hourly rate followed by their rate, gross pay followed by their pay. Does that all make sense? We're shoving all of that stuff collectively into the same string and then returning that string. Again, are there other ways of doing this? Of course there are. This is probably as good a way of doing it as any other way, but it certainly isn't the best way, I'm sure. All right. Now I'm going to move this up just a little bit so we can write the last routine here, and that's public string print totals. All right. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to use this output string, and I'm going to fill it up a little bit, so I'm going to grab that code. Okay. And what I'm just going to have two lines that I'm printing out. Okay. The first one's going to say, Total number employees plus get, oh, we don't have a get count. We could have written one, but we don't have one, so I'll just put count in there. Plus and we will write one more line. That, that should be everything. Now, is it possible when we go to run this, I'll get an error? Of course it is. All right. I'm hoping we don't, but I, I don't know for sure. And that's everything. Again, that's looking at it, it's about between 170 and 170 lines. Okay. And I've got a very judicious use of white space in there and the limiters that I use to separate things. So there's probably somewhere around, I don't know, 130 lines or so in there. It's not, it's not a really super huge class. All right. Now, if you have not already done so, of course, it's a good time for a file save all. All right. On which one? You you have red squigglies because I don't. Mm -hmm. Did you did you did you put string the word string in front of it? Still. And it's not that I'm that wise, but I've done that. 
So I know what to look for with that. All right, so if you have not already done so, please look up on the screen. If you have not yet done so, all right, over here, right mouse click where it says edu.rankin, all right, right there. And I'm going to get rid of my file that, that I've got in here. I'm just going to get rid of this. So I'm going to pretend I don't have it either. So I'm just going to delete this. Hopefully it won't give me any problems trying to do that, but I'm just telling it to delete everything. So right mouse click on here, choose new, choose class again. All right. And all I'm going to type in here is just payroll driver. That's it. No, you don't do that because then it's, then it's trying to put an EDU under your EDU. So we, we already have told it where it's going to live, for lack of better words. So putting that there, now notice I've got payroll and I've got payroll driver. Okay? We're going to write the driver right now. The good news is this is it right here. What we just wrote was five or six pages. This is a couple pages. We should be able to get this done. Still have time when you know left in class. All right. So, as I did earlier, if you remember over here, up at up at the top here, I put a comment in there. So I'm going to put another comment in here. All right. And I'm just going to say here, this is the driver for the payroll program. It will instantiate, in other words, create, this is what we're going to do, five different payroll objects, which will test the validation in the payroll class and make sure it all works as it should. That's plenty. All right. It's always nice. This might be a little overkill putting in a comment like this. All right. But I've tried to add some comments in here. One thing you probably noticed in here is I, because I, I often do this, I didn't put in here like begin and throw that in there and end. I just thought that I have it on mine, but I just thought it might be too much to be throwing at you. But sometimes it makes it, the program hard to read. All right. So we've got our package statement. We want to come in and start writing our driver. All right. So the first thing that we want to do, as it says here, is we want to create five different payroll objects. Now, Think about this. I'm going to put this on the board, but you know, hopefully it'll make sense. It worked out nice, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to create, first I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to create a Jeff object. And that Jeff object is going to have what? It's going to have a first name. It's going to have a last name. It's going to have an hours worked. And it's going to have an hourly rate. In other words, everything is valid. Does that make sense? That's the first thing I'm going to do, and that's going to be a little j. Then I'm going to make a sandy object. And it's going to have a valid first name. It's going to have a valid last name. It's going to have a valid hours worked. And it's going to have a valid hourly rate. Please look on the screen here, if you would, everybody. OK? Other. Other than the fact that we've got different names here and we've got different values here, the difference between these two, this is going to check valid with no overtime. This is going to check valid with overtime. Does that make sense? Those are two tests that we're going to create here. All right. Then I'm going to create a, a next, the next object. I'm going to make it a Taylor object. And it's going to have Taylor. Scott, if you don't like this, use your own family's names or whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm going to put in an invalid hours. I'm going to put in negative 100 for the hours and 20. What should that be reset to? Zero. If this works, that will be reset to zero. Does that make sense? 
we'll be able to check that. Then I'm going to make, because it fits better, instead of Mackenzie, I'm going to make a Kenzie one. And she'll have a valid hours, I don't know, 40, but she'll have an invalid rate. The rate with the maximum was 100, so I'll make it 1,000. Finally, I'm going to make a Chloe. She's not going to have anything. So her first name should be FNU. Her last name should be LNU. Her hours work should be zero, and her hourly rate should be zero. Does all that make sense? Because now I just have to take what's on the board and type it in. And the way I do that is I start by saying the type of object, so it's payroll, Jeff equals new, new payroll. And then I have to put all that information in. I'm going to move this over so hopefully it, it'll all fit on the screen. Now, I don't have to do this, but I'm going to put a comment in here that says, test number one, all fields valid, no OT worked. All right? This will be test number two, all fields valid, with OT worked. Then I'm going to do another one. We're not done yet, but we're done creating objects. All right? Now, if I run this, nothing's going to print out. Would you agree with that? I've never told anything to print out yet, so nothing will print out. So we're going to add that stuff in just a minute, but I wanted to show you that. All right? So this is instantiating or creating the five objects. We could create an object and then print, create another one and print, or we can create all five and then print. We can do it any way we want. It's our friggin' program. We can write this any way we want to. Now, does everybody have these five? If you don't, it's up on the board. All right? So I'm going to come down here, and now I'm going to print them out. So I'm going to, and, and I've got my choice. I can J option paint it or I can system.out.println it, it really and truly doesn't matter. All right? So, since I didn't use any J option pane yet, all right, I'll just do the system.out.println.
did I do that again? Why, you know, why didn't somebody come and say, hey, Jeff, inside of your class, you didn't put a main? All this stuff has to live inside of a main. So grab everything we just did here and throw it in a main. Okay? All right. So I'm going to say here payroll object Jeff backslash n n plus jeff in fact let's put a backslash n before it and after it so we're sure that there's going to be plenty of room here all right then we'll have a sandy a taylor Kinsey, and a Chloe. All right. Now, I'll come right back to it, but now's the moment of truth. So I'm going to do a save all, and then I'm going to try to run. And I, you want to make sure you choose the driver. That's what you want to run. So I'm going to run the driver. And when it gets all done, I'm going to take a look at what I have. There it is. Whoop, I didn't put a, I guess I didn't, I should need another backslash n, but you get the idea. So let's see. Jeff, 40, 25, 1,000. Sandy, 50, 20, 1,100. Taylor, zero. It was correct. All right, Kenzie, zero. That was correct. Chloe, all of the defaults. So it appears as if everything worked. Everybody agree with that? All right, We're, I've got this first name here. I've got to put a backslash N before it. And once I do that, the, it'll look a little nicer. That's in here. And when we print out, where's the two string right here? Let's put a backslash N after this. Okay. All right, now, somebody tell me, how do we change these values? What do we do? Would you agree that we are going to reset the values? So we will say the name of the object, for instance, Taylor.setHours, because her hours are invalid. All right, so I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to say, Taylor, notice the IntelliSense will kick in, dot, set. And it says, hey, you, if I'm going to put this in here, it's got to be a double in there. All right, so let's say she worked 60 hours. All right. Now that we've done that, let's print out her information again. And I'm going to put here, so I know it, updated payroll object Taylor all right so I have reset her hours so it's valid okay so file save and I'm gonna run it again there she is with 20 hours including her overtime all right so I've done that and I want to go back because the next one that was invalid was Kenzie had an invalid pay rate. So I'm going to say Kenzie.setRate. I don't know. Let's give her 50 bucks an hour. Not rates, rate. Okay. I'm going to run it again. Well, that's what happens when I did the copy, but that's okay. Something's wrong in there, but I'll have to fix that. All right. Oh, it just did, it did her, hers all over again. So let me see what I just did.
That should be Kenzie. That's what's wrong. So now she's got a valid amount per hour, and she's got her um, gross pay. Finally, I've got to go back to the Chloe object, which was empty, and I've got to reset all of that stuff. So Chloe dot set first name. Might as well make it her name, Chloe. Chloe dot set last name. Let's set a rate or hours. It doesn't matter the order in which we do this. Let's say she works 60 hours. And let's say she made $60 an hour. Now we will print the updated Chloe information. Save this, run it again. And there's her updated information. So what did we have? If you look at the output, Jeff was valid, Sandy who was valid, Taylor who was invalid, Kenzie who was invalid, Chloe who technically was invalid. We updated Taylor, we updated Mackenzie or Kenzie, we updated Chloe. Does all that make sense? The only thing we didn't do yet was our, to our, our final totals. All right. Now, I want to show you this. So I want somebody to answer this question for me if you think you can, or please try to. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to call that print totals. That's in here. There it is. Everybody see that? Okay. Well, we could create an output string. Maybe do that, I don't know. So we're returning a string, and I don't know if we can do that or not. Can I say here string output str equals get totals? Well, we can't do that because it's, it doesn't know what get totals is. But we should be able to call get totals and pass it anybody. All right, Jeff, that should be a dot. Do we call it get totals? No. What is the name of that routine? Jeff dot print totals. I'm sorry. Print totals. All right. This is where I got my error. I just want to show you that. All right, so file, save all. Let's run it. And we go down here and look at the very bottom. Oh, for some, oh you know what? I've got to print it, and I never told it to print. Okay. Um, I don't even need to create an, that object like we did. I should be able to just say, System dot out dot print line Jeff dot print totals. That should work. Okay? And I'm gonna see if it does. And well that gross pay I can already tell is wrong. So something is already wrong in there. Okay, the number of employees is correct, but the gross pay is incorrect. Now that's funny. I didn't get that before. I don't even know. I don't have no idea where it's pulling that thousand from. There is no one here that made. Oh, I made a thousand. So maybe it's grabbing mine. I don't know. But it's wrong. Okay. So everything else that's in here is correct, but that's wrong. Okay. Now, how many people fell behind? I, I, I don't want to burn too much paper, but is there anybody who would like a hard copy of this? No? All right, fine. I'll print out one hard copy. Anybody else? All right. 
what I'm going to do is for part of your test tomorrow, I want you to fix this. So it all works, except our totals is wrong. So you have to dig through there and see if you can try to figure out why it's wrong and fix it. All right. So you've got a program that's about 95% complete. And I'm asking you to fix the other 5%. What? Yeah. Anybody else? Printing out two of them. No one else wants one. That's fine. Just so you know, if this makes, if I'm, what I'm about to say makes you feel any better, you've now kind of looked at two different ways of programming Java. Doing it object oriented and doing it procedurally. When we get, and please listen to this, when we get to the point where we're doing the uh, Android stuff, it's more procedural. So if you like the first way we were doing it, that's more the way we're going to write the Android.
was the rectangle one. Maybe you don't even care, but I'd already printed it out. So. This will not be on the test tomorrow. Everybody hear that? This will not be on the test. This will be on the next test that you take. This first test will only have the material from that PDF that's on chapters one through five. All right, so you will do something more similar to like what we did yesterday with the rock, paper, scissors or with the guessing game, something like that. I will ask you to use individual methods and modularize it, all right? And you'll probably use some constants, et cetera. But I'm not gonna give you a lot of instructions. I want you to write it the way that you think it should be written. Hopefully that makes sense. By the time you leave tomorrow, all right, and okay, everybody but Amina's in here, but by the time you leave tomorrow, please, I want your first set of assignments. Your first set of assignments are the first three payroll programs. I don't care if you want to put them into a separate folder. If you do, you probably could email me the folder because uh, these Java files aren't very big. All right, I don't want anything executable, but I, I, I don't know how big they, I don't know. With IntelliJ IDEA, let's see if I, I'm going to try that just for the heck of it to see how big about it would be. So if I went in to grab the first three that we did, so payroll one, here's, here's even more than we did. So let's see, we don't need that, we don't need that. According to this, those three together would be about 75K. So once you zip that, it's going to be smaller than that. It might be 50K. But please make sure, all right, I don't want to mark anybody as being late. So by the end of the period, tomorrow. Make sure that you have either emailed me your first three programs that we did as a class, those three payroll ones, all right? And then for your test tomorrow, I'll give you instructions on what to do, okay? We've gone through a lot in a very small amount of time. I understand that. So, the good news about hitting that chapter today is what that means, if you look up on the screen here, is that next week, on Tuesday when you come back, we're going to jump right into Chapter 7. We're going to take this same payroll program that you have, the same one. All right, we're going to copy all of the code. We're, we can use the same, the same, um, we can use the same class. All we're going to have to change is the driver to be able to incorporate, uh, I'll see if I have time to do both an array example and an array list example. So we'll do that between Tuesday and Wednesday, and then the, the chapter that comes after that is an advanced look at classes. All right, so we will look at a few other things that are in there, all right? And then you'll have your next test. So that'll be more like what we just wrote today. I'm not going to make it anything where you're going to have to spend hours and hours on it. It's got to be something that I think you can do in about three hours or so. All right. Then after that, we jump into you know, 9, 10, and 11, etc. So we've, we've made a lot of progress so far. My hope is then that by the end of next week, we will be at least up to right here which means we'll be halfway through this book by then. We're not going to spend we're not going to go over everything in chapters 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17. We're going to skip at least two or three of those chapters. All right? So we are on on target right now to be able to finish this in around 4 weeks. Then it's Android time. All right? You'll know cuz that day when I come in here I will have nine tablets with me, all right? And what I'll do is I think we're going to put like a little marker or a piece of paper or something in there, 
and you know, and I'm going to have you put your name on it so you're always using your machine. People just get territorial about their own stuff. All right? But it's yours to use, not to keep. We're not raffling them off or giving them away. I'm done, unless anybody has any last questions. Yes, sir. Go back and look on the print totals. Oh, okay. You're 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 saying right here. You can't just say print totals. Okay. Can you say payroll? I tried doing that too, and it didn't take that. The only way you to answer your question, could you say payroll dot print totals? Yes, but you have to make that method static if you do that. Because the other thing that static means is you can call it without having to create an object. Since it's not static, it has to be called. We could have said here Jeff, or we could have said Taylor, or, or Kenzie, or Sandy, or Chloe. It wouldn't have mattered. We get the same results. All right? But you're saying here, could we say payroll right there? If we wanted to make it payroll, we would have had to have gone back into here and put static in there. And the other reason I didn't do that is I'm using that format here and that's not static. Then I got to make that static. And the problem with making that static is I also use that format in a couple of other routines. Then I have to make those static. See what I mean? Then after a while, it's like you get it half static and half non static. It gets a little bit confusing. So I decided to do it this way. Hopefully that makes sense. Any other questions? <laughs>